sooner the better. Got to get started to finish, right? Yeah. I'd like to call to order the uh, October 15th of 2012 uh, City Commission meeting for Shawnee. Uh, call a roll, please. Here. 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 We do have a quorum, okay. Um, our invocation today, again today will be if we'll all stand, we will recite the Lord's Prayer, please. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Commissioner Hall will lead us in the flag salute. Attention, position, pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would consider approval of the agenda that we have in front of us. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Linda A.G., second. Call a roll, please. Harris. Aye. Angie. Aye. Aye. Paul. Aye. 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 I would like to, uh, before we move to the next item, recognize um, Mr. Jim Palinkas here, who is filling in for our city attorney, Mary Ann, who's not doing very well, very sick. And uh, we're sorry to hear that, but we're glad to have you here, Jim. Uh, and uh, he'll be our keeping us straight tonight. So uh, good hopefully, luck. good luck. <laughs> Our uh, next item is consider approval of the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion from. So moved. Mr. Winteringer. Second. Second by Mr. Hall. Call a roll, please. Winteringer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Smith. Aye. 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 Next item is citizens' participation. Um, we welcome comments from the people here that uh, would like to share something with us. Please feel free to do so. Would anyone like to share their thoughts with us? Okay, if not, we'll move on to the next one. This is Family Promise Week. I have a proclamation on Family Promise Week. Is there anyone here from there? Peggy Johnson. Nice having you here, Peggy. We'll face that way, Peggy. Okay. <laughs> On behalf of the citizens of Shawnee, Oklahoma, Mayor West Maynard does hereby proclaim the week of October the 14th through 2012 as Family Promise of Shawnee. Whereas homelessness can and does affect entire families in the community, and whereas Family Promise of Shawnee offers help and hope to regain their self-sufficiency to homeless families with children and homeless pregnant women through the cooperative efforts of the local congregations, businesses, social service programs, educational institutions, and individual efforts, and whereas the volunteers of Family Promise of Shawnee dedicate themselves to this program by offering hope when all is lost, dignity when others look away, and recognition for the value of the human spirit. And whereas the purpose of Family Promise of Shawnee is to inspire others to recognize the intimate need of dignity and hope for all 
human beings. All citizens of Shawnee are encouraged to be involved with family promise of Shawnee. Now, therefore, I, Wes Maynard, mayor of the city of Shawnee of Oklahoma, by the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim the week of October the 14th through 20 as Family Promise Week of Shawnee. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I just want to thank you for the proclamation. Uh, we get this annually, and it brings public awareness to our program of uh, what we're doing in the community. And as most of you know, uh, we serve homeless families with children. Our core focus is homeless children in the community. And our goal at Family Promise is to offer them a hand up rather than a handout. Um, we have a vast volunteer base in this community, and we're very proud to offer the services that we do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you tell me to stay down. <laughs> Next item is no texting while driving. Proclamation. This is one of my pet peeves so that you know. I, when I drive down I-40 and see people reading a book or texting on I-40 going all over it. So, you know, to me it <laughs> is uh, something that we all need to be aware of and not just a day but all the time. Surely, we have not a one in this room will text and drive. We can count on that, right? <laughs> on behalf of the citizens of Shawnee, I'm Mayor West Maynard, to hereby proclaim Tuesday, October the 16th, as no texting while driving day. Whereas the city of Shawnee holds the health and safety of its citizens as a primary concern, and whereas text messaging is the main mode of communication for most American teenagers with half of all teens sending between 21 and 70 texts a day and expecting a reply within the next five minutes. And whereas texting while driving takes one's eyes off the road for an average of five seconds, and whereas according to an AT&T survey, 43% of American teenage drivers admitted to texting while driving, even though 97% of them know it is dangerous. And 77% of the teenagers surveyed reported observing their parents, let me read that again, their parents texting while driving. And whereas a recent university study showed those who send text messages while driving are 23 more times likely to crash. And whereas a driver that sends a text message while driving not only jeopardizes his or her safety, but also the safety of passengers, pedestrians, and other drivers. Now, therefore, I, West Maynard, mayor of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, by the authority vested in me, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, that is tomorrow, October the 16th, as no texting while driving that. You bet. I hope everybody will take this to heart. I know that um, I'm cautioning my children all the time and my husband about their, your cell phone usage. So just be careful while you drive and keep your eyes on the road. Mayor, I've got to tell this story. Okay. I was stopped at 8 in Sanger, Texas, about 1 o'clock Saturday. And I pulled up to the stop sign, and below the stop sign, there's a sign, $200 fine for texting or talking on the phone. And the little girl sitting in front of me was sitting there texting. There wasn't any car coming anywhere, but she was sitting there. I could see that she was texting. And there wasn't anybody around. I honked and pointed to the, to the sign. <laughs> $200 fine, I guess. As long as you thought you stopped at the stop sign, that was the same thing. <laughs> Maybe you could have been like Barney Five. Well, citizens yeah, arrest. Citizens, citizens arrest. arrest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, again, I, I don't think we can we can talk about this enough. This is very serious things, and uh, uh, when we start talking about people texting and talking on the cell phone and driving, and it is just difficult. To, I know probably for our chief police to enforce. 
if we take some action, but we still have to caution everybody to stop and think when they do that so that uh, everyone's safety in our community is uh, better off. Uh, our city manager has a presentation of the employee of the month for us. Mr. Chairman, Lisa Lassio is the employee of the month. I think fill this up because this. <laughs> I want to know who her boyfriend is. Whether oh, he was the mayor for a while. Oh, he that. came up here and said, <laughs> "Oh." Okay. Um, I'd like, to, I don't know if how many of you know, this is Lisa Lesion. She's a deputy city clerk in, in uh, my office. She does a wonderful job. Um, the reason you have an agenda today is because of Lisa. That's <laughs> so right. She had to get it out late Friday afternoon, and she was by herself, and she was a real trooper. Although she was nominated for Employee of the Month before that, she would have gotten it regardless now because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all that she does for me, and, and thank you for everything you do for the city. Thank you. Well, I, I think it's very important that you recognize some people that do outstanding things, but in the short time that I have been involved with this city government, there are a lot of people here in this organization that deserve to be employees of the month because there's some some great people working at uh, this city and uh, it's, it's exciting to be around them and, and see that occurring. Our next item is a public, public hearing and consider an ordinance to rezone property at 400 West MacArthur from C1 neighborhood to C3 automotive, commercial and recreation. Case number P14-12, applicant Don DeGraffen Reed. They asked for a staff report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Commission members. Uh, case P14-12 is a uh, rezone request that will facilitate uh, the redevelopment of this uh, uh, commercial uh, corner in Shawnee from its uh, essentially vacant uh, condition now to a, a restaurant. Uh, the uh, uh, existing uh, boomerang uh, located nearby um, Along Kickapoo, we'll be relocating to this site, and um, Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval uh, at their meeting on October 3rd, and the request is in conformance with the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, it is a small site, but it is also a small structure that's proposed, and it has kind of a uh, retro uh, diner um, aesthetic to it, so it should be kind of a neat uh, design for Shawnee, and the parking is all located in, in, in the rear as well, so it will... It will um, have a nice presence from, uh, from MacArthur Street as well. Um, that said, staff does concur with the Planning Commission, does recommend approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I noticed there's part of a building on that lot. Are they going to utilize that or are they going to take I, it? I, I think they may. I think they may. They, they, they've saved that and, and they'd like to incorporate it somehow into the new structure. Um, there's, um, that's certainly up to them. There's no, um, uh, there's no um, uh, you know, building code or zoning code uh, advantage to that, but, but if they want to do that, they certainly can. Any other questions of it? Okay. I'll open the public hearing. Uh, I ask anyone like to speak in favor of that? Uh, would anyone like to speak in opposition to that? Well, then I'll close the public hearing. We have received the staff's recommendation uh, any further discussion, ladies and gentlemen, on the commission? Okay, I'll call for a motion, please. What well, move we uh, reach on the property is recommended by the planning commission and the uh, planning department. Second. Okay. And second. Uh, Mr. Palinkas, could you read the title of the ordinance, please, sir? An ordinance concerning the zoning classification of the following described property Of Shawnee accordingly. So read. 
Call a roll, please. <coughs> Aye. Paul? Aye. 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 The next item is a public hearing and consider an ordinance to rezone the property at 8331 North Harrison from A1 Agriculture to, I guess it's I2 Light Industrial. Uh, the case number P15-12 applicant is Clayton Eads. Uh, I'll ask uh, for a staff report uh, on that one, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I will be speaking on uh, both agenda item number seven and number eight uh, in, in your packets. They are, they are related and, and uh, um, do concern the same property. Uh, agenda item number seven is the rezone request, and agenda item number eight is the uh, preliminary plat request. Um, starting with number seven, uh, case P1512. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezone to light industrial, uh, as you noted, sir. The property is adjacent to uh, other light industrial uses. Um, the immediate intended use is uh, to develop a portion of the property for uh, storage units, and you'll see that reflected um, uh, more clearly in, uh, under agenda, uh, agenda item number eight and, and the uh, preliminary plat when you look at um, uh, some of the proposed uses. And then the remainder of the property would be developed uh, over time through other other um, projects that aren't identified at this at this time. Now the Planning Commission uh, did recommend approval. Uh, staff concurs with that recommendation uh, and does believe that it is in conformance with the city's um, uh, long range plans and that the um, um, it is also in conformance with the surrounding neighborhood and with the uh, existing and planned future uh, land use uh, in the area. You'll uh, note uh, on the preliminary plat, which on your packet I think comes in on about page 90 or 89 on, on, the, um, on the iPad, um, you'll see phase one clearly identified with some uh, structures uh, noted, and th that is the proposed storage facility, uh, and everything else is very, um, very conceptual. There's some existing development right at the corner, and that will remain, uh, some existing structures uh, at the corner, uh, residential building, and that will remain for the, um, uh, for the time being. You'll also notice on the preliminary plat that there's um, an area, uh, significant area on the eastern portion of the plat that is uh, within the 100-year floodplain, and um, that area is not, uh, would not be, to be able to be developed right now under our, our ordinances. However, I know that the applicant is working with their engineer to see um, what kind of um, stormwater modifications can be made and, and if that floodplain can be reduced so that that can also be developed in the future. But um, but I just wanted to point that out, out as well, let you know that we are in, uh, and you would be in conformance with our ordinance, um, uh, approving the preliminary plat as recommended by the commission because, uh, because there are conditions that address the floodplain and do not authorize development in there at this time. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have on either the rezone or the uh, preliminary plat case. Is there no questions then? Uh, thank you, Justin. Uh, at this time, I'll open the public hearing on this matter. Um, anyone like to speak in favor of it? Please state your name. And Hi, Melissa Mahaffey. Okay. I'm sure. Great. Uh, I'm one of the owners of the property, and we are looking at rezoning um, this property located at 8331, 8331 North Harrison from agriculture to I-1 Light Industrial. Uh, this allows anything from retail storages to small warehouses, and we are looking at any of these options at this time. And our plans uh, for the for foreseeable future is to put storage units on those on that land. Any questions? Okay. No, thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. Are there anyone? Is there anyone here that would like to speak in opposition to this proposal? Okay. I will close the public hearing. And commissioners, any discussion in this matter? Uh, Justin wants this uh, as rezoned. Do they have to come back to do any additional zoning in there? Uh, they do not, sir, unless unless uh, what a proposed use in the future requires a conditional use permit, which would require a, approval by, by this body. So we're rezoning the whole area. Yes, sir. As, as requested, I think it's about 17 or 18 acres. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the, I assume that's a railroad track running down. 
be part of that? Is there a pipeline or what is There is a large easement through there, mm -hmm. in the pipeline, I believe. Okay. Any other, any other discussion matters for Justin or anyone? Okay. I'll call for a motion. I move where he's on the property is recommended by the staff and planning commission. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Harrod. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Hall seconded. it. Call for the motion, please. Oh, I thought you get to read that later. You want to read it now? Go ahead. It says right here. Southwest quarter of the southwest quarter for section 17, Township 11 North, range 4 east of the Indian Meridian, Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma. Less than except a tract of land described as beginning at the southwest corner of said southwest quarter, thence north 0 degrees, 1 minute 6 seconds, along the west line of said southwest quarter, a distance of 658.69 feet. Thence north 89 degrees, 24 minutes, 13 seconds east, a distance of 113.43 feet. Thence south, zero degrees, three minutes, 12 seconds east, a distance of 420.96 feet. Thence south, one degree, 15 minutes, 30 seconds east, a distance of 237.77 feet to a point on the south line of said southwest quarter, thence south, 89 degrees, 25 minutes, 18 seconds west, along said south line, a distance of 118.83 feet to the point of beginning, and less than except a tract 150 feet by 150 feet at the southwest corner of said tract, according to the recorded plat thereof, rezoning said property from A1 agricultural to I1, oh, I'm sorry, I2, light industrial, and amending the official zoning map of the city of Shawnee accordingly. Okay. I'll call for a motion on this matter. Huh? Call for roll. I'm sorry, call a roll. Okay, I'm sorry. Harry? Aye. Paul? Aye. Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Angie? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Motion carries. Okay. Item number eight, I guess I'm a little bit confused here, meaning uh, you said that what you spoke of, you spoke in favor of this item also, didn't you, in your previous yes, discussion here? Okay. Um, uh, do we have any questions for him, I, I believe, or anything? Uh, There's a preliminary plat for the same property, right? There. Yes, sir. It's a preliminary plat for the same property. Um, with the conditions identified on page uh, page 102 on uh, the Planning Commission um, recommended approval uh, subject to those conditions. Uh, any questions? I mean, I, I kind of thought we might have covered them in the previous. There's some conditions on there. I want to check. It's the floodplain. Well, he, he referred to yeah. the floodplain. What, what are some other conditions that are on there? Conditions are um, are pretty standard conditions, uh, with the exception of the, of the uh, the notation uh, regarding the floodplain, and, and the fact that um, by ordinance, um, uh, really, what all all you can all the city can recommend at this time for preliminary plat are those lots that are not within the uh, the designated floodplain, and so that's reflected uh, in the recommendation um, of approving phase one lots one, uh, three, and four, um, subject to six conditions, and. Um, uh, for the benefit of the commission too, you, you will receive a final plat uh, as well. So before the uh, uh, development occurs on this property, uh, you will see a final plat and improvement plans will be submitted. Uh, so you will have an opportunity to um, uh, to see this project again uh, in that regard. Well, that, on that item four sidewalks, will that be available to do it in lieu of sidewalks on that project? I think that'd be an ideal location to do that. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, I'd move we approve the uh, Preliminary plot, plat plan with uh, as recommended by the planning department. There was the four con or six conditions. Okay. I have a motion to have a second. 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 Our Commissioner Smith. 
Do we need to read this item? I don't think so, do we, huh? Okay, I'll uh, call a roll, please. Harris? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. A.G.? Aye. Maynard? Aye. Paul? Aye. 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 <clears throat> item number nine, public hearing and consideration of an ordinance to rezone property at 3300 North Union from R1 residential single family dwelling to R3 multiple family dwelling. Case number P16-12, applicant Mike Little Construction. I uh, see that it's being, def staff is recommending that it be deferred to the <coughs> November commission meeting at the request of, an act of the uh, applicant. To, uh, can I call for a motion? So I don't want to defer it. I'll make yeah. a motion. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. James, Mr. Harrod made a motion to defer it till to, November. That, okay. that is the motion. Yeah. A second? Second. Okay, but Mr. Hall. Okay. Call a roll, please. Harrod? Aye. Hall? Aye. Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. 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 Next item is a public hearing and consideration of an ordinance to rezone property at 906 East Independence, C1 Neighborhood Commercial to C3. Automotive, Commercial, and Recreation. Case number P17-12. Applicant is O'Reilly Automotive Stores. Uh, staff report at this time. This uh, request uh, under P17-12 uh, would facilitate uh, the expansion of the existing O'Reilly Auto Parts store located at Independence and Harrison. Uh, the parcel is approximately uh, 14,500 square feet. And the existing zoning, zoning is C1. Uh, the request is to uh, rezone the property to uh, C3, which is a higher intensity commercial zoning that would um, allow the property to, um, that would allow that uh, piece of the property to match uh, the existing zoning of the existing store, and, uh, as well as uh, neighboring zonings uh, as well to the, uh, uh, to the south, west, and east. And it would um, just better facilitate expansion of the um, of the store, expansion of the parking lot, and, and, and make it all uh, uh, contiguous in terms of zoning. Uh, Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval, and um, staff concurs with that. Are there any questions? Are, that, are there two separate, <coughs> actually, lots? There are actually, this is an actually, this is actually a separate piece of, of property. It, um, is it behind it, or on yeah, the right side, right. directly? Toward, is that? Uh, toward the bank? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. sir. It's, a, it's in between the existing building and the bank. I didn't remember that much space when I looked at that. There is a lot there. Yeah, there he is. Uh huh. Okay. Any other questions of uh, Justin? Hmm? This isn't related. When are they going to start the one on Kickapoo? How's that coming? We have those plans in under review right now, so I believe that will start uh, definitely before the end of the year. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Uh, I ask for those who wish to speak in favor of this. Come forward. All right. Would anyone like to speak in opposition to this? Well, I will close the public hearing. And um, I'll ask the uh, city attorney to read the title of the ordinance, please, sir. An ordinance concerning the zoning classification of the following described property, located within the corporate limits of the city of Shawnee, Oklahoma, to wit. A tract of land described as beginning at a point 198 feet east of the southwest corner of the southwest quarter of Section 8, Township 10 North, Range 4 East of Indian Meridian, Pottawatomie County, Oklahoma, thence north 220 feet, thence east 66 feet, thence south 200 feet, thence west 66 feet to the point of beginning, according to the recorded plat thereof. Rezoning said property from C2 Neighborhood Commercial to C3 Automotive Commercial and Recreation and amending the official zoning map of the City of Shawnee accordingly. I'll call for a motion on this matter. Motion to approve. Uh, Commissioner Winteringer, do I have a second? I'll Se second. Linda, <laughs> Commissioner Aitchie, that's fine, that's great. That is great. Um, call a roll, please. Aye. 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 Aye.
Next item is consideration of approval of the final plat for Shawnee Medical Center located at Keithley Road and MacArthur Street. Case number S12-12. Applicant is Shawnee Real Estate Holdings, LLC. Recommendation from them is it be deferred to the November Planning Commission meeting at the request of the applicant. I have a motion by Commissioner Harry. Do I have a second? Second. By Commissioner Hall, call the roll, please. Harry. Aye. Hall. Aye. 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 Next item is a consideration of approval of preliminary plat for Belmont Park Edition located at Acme Road and MacArthur Street. Case number S13-12, applicant J. Bentley Development, LLC. I thought we'd already approved this once, that might. For the rezone in March, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Justin, would you any, like to give us a report here and your recommendation? Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, the, this agenda item as well as the um, uh, next agenda item are both uh, related to the Belmont Park addition project, uh, and the applicant is requesting both preliminary and final plat approval. Uh, in March of uh, 2012, uh, a rezone was approved uh, that uh, rezoned uh, this property R3 uh, and a small portion of it C3. And uh, the applicant um, uh, has um, returned and, and prepared the uh, necessary uh, planning documents and engineering documents um, for a portion of the property zoned R3 and uh, does plan to uh, build 25 uh, townhome style um, multifamily units on the property. Planning Commission uh, had an opportunity to review the project and uh, did uh, unanimously recommend approval for both the preliminary and final plat. There are uh, five uh, recommended conditions, uh, all pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think I need even, even need, to, need to note anything uh, out of the ordinary with the requirements. Uh, there is a sidewalk required along uh, Acme Road uh, as well as uh, MacArthur. Although the uh, first phase of the, of the development uh, occurs uh, entirely along um, Ac the Acme Road frontage. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I, I see the drain, and I, is that the area where we, kind of on the east side, they've connected to run the things to the casino? Mm -hmm. They were digging there. Yes, is sir. That, is that a low area? Is that <coughs> able to be filled in, or is that a floodplain? Or there, there's actually not floodplain. Um, Okay. Uh, on this property, there is uh, there is uh, like what could be described as a low area, and, and, and okay. it's kind of heavily wooded through there. Right. Um, and a portion of that will be developed uh, for their stormwater um, controls. Okay. There will be a, a stormwater detention uh, pond built uh, as part of this project to make sure it doesn't impact any adjacent uh, properties. Um, some of the digging that you saw that was occurring on this property um, was. Uh, really part of uh, city right of way and improvements that were that were made to the lift station there okay. and uh, those improvements to the lift station uh, will um, facilitate this development and also facilitate the improvements at the casino and, and at the Kickapoo side so there's um, a number of developments going on and kind of right in this vicinity and they're all going to be benefited by those improvements uh, to the lift station will the Building restrictions be far enough back in case 45th, I mean, in mm -hmm. case uh, Acme Road needs to be widened down the road, let's say, yeah. we'd be fortunate enough to get an exit or something mm -hmm. off the interstate. Very very good question. And as part of this plat, um, it's, it's hard to, to see if you don't ex know exactly what you're looking for, but as part of the final plat, um, when it's signed and recorded, there is an additional right-of-way dedication of, of 17 additional feet in addition to the statutory 33 feet. Um, okay. So, and, and that is in our subdivision requirements. So, as part of this process, the applicant is uh, essentially giving uh, additional right of way to the city, uh, so that if we if we do want to widen it, we have that uh, in the future, and we're not in a situation where we have to purchase right of way. Great, great. Other questions? I mean, I, I, uh, I, do we need to read this? Uh, I didn't think so. So, let's just call for the motion. Motion to approve as recommended by staff. Okay. Mr. Hall, Commissioner Hall, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Winteringer. Call the roll, please. Hall. Aye. Winteringer. Aye. Smith. Aye. Smith. Aye. 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 A
Stevens? Aye. AG? Aye. Harry? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Next item is consideration of approval of the final plat for Belmont Park Edition located at Acme Road in MacArthur Street. Case number S14 12, applicant J. Bentley developed. Item, item, I think we kind of got the report already on this item. Uh, discussion, any further discussion on this matter? Well, I'll call for a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve. No second. Okay. <clears throat> motion to approve, and we have a second. Um, call the roll, please. AG? Aye. Smith? Aye. Stevens? Aye. Perry? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Hall? Aye. Aye. Next item is consider a resolution in support of passage of state question 764 addressing Oklahoma's water infrastructure needs. Uh, Mr. Manager, City Manager, could you talk to us about this, please, sir? Normally, I wouldn't put things on the agenda that say vote yes, but this is an important one that we need to take a look at. Um, state chamber, uh, OWRB, uh, our local chamber all have weighed in on this particular issue and think it's a good idea. Basically, before you is state question 764 that will be on the ballot here in a couple of weeks. And what it basically does is expand the opportunity for municipal water and sewer systems to tap into revolving loan fund money at the state level. We have done that many, many times in the past. Uh, it's at very low interest rates. They understand municipal water and sewer system authorities. Um, so if it pleases the commission, um, state question 764 will be on the ballot in a couple of weeks. And y'all's action tonight would just be an affirmative action or not. Uh, to to send to the state chamber and to our citizens uh, what what we'd like to see them do at the polls. Normally, again, I wouldn't put this on the city commission's agenda because it's got it's got that flair of you know we're influencing our voters, but this is a good thing for cities and and, and counties and <coughs> rural water districts that are in the water and sewer uh, treatment and distribution business. If I can answer any questions, I will. You I, made it. Go ahead, Linda. I'm sorry. You go I just first. I had a question as I read this resolution. Uh, how did the city of Shawnee save $2 million by taking advantage of this? Over the years, with the loans that we've taken out, the interest rate is much lower than you can go to a bank to get. So <clears throat> we've saved several okay. million dollars over In the years. Interest costs are less. Okay. okay. All the fees are less. So, true, for example, with our, with our pumps and control <coughs> project, that project was considered a green project which meant that because the energy usage on the new pumps that we installed were um, uh, much more efficient, energy efficient than the old ones that were out there, we had like a $200,000 forgiveness on that loan back. And that's also part of uh, the, the money savings that we get. So, I, I have a question. If we are getting that, we're already utilizing that system, does this mean that that we're getting something that other cities haven't been able to get? That, that why is it being, have to be passed? I guess I'm just curious. I don't understand I mean, that. You, you have to, your debt to income ratio in your water and sewer system has to pass muster just like it would with a bank. Okay. But in, so every city's available to be able to apply for it. Uh, we have applied for it. Many other, every city a municipal water system is available to apply for it. The difference here is that there are, the states identified a lot of future needs for cities in our state for having these dollars available to them so that they can improve and expand their systems because the, the, the amount that we have now that's available in the re revolving loan fund is loaned out. And keep in mind, the cities pay this. The only time that we as taxpayers of this state wouldn't, would have to pay it is if a city defaulted. But they do a pretty darn good job of making sure that mm -hmm. that your your debt to income ratio and your water systems is what it's supposed to be sure. before they loan you the money. Okay, sir. Any other questions? We're going to give this information to the press too. Yes, sir. Linda, any more? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Well, Mr. Commissioner Herod. Um, you need to read this, I guess. To a resolution supporting the passage of state question 764 to address Oklahoma's water infrastructure needs. Call a roll, please. Mm -hmm. Winner, Aye. Carrot. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Hall. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. 
Aye. Item number 15, acknowledge the sales tax report received October 2012. Well, we've had better news uh, this month than last month. Thank um, you. Up there. Um, we were up $76,733, or 5.86% um, compared to last year receipts. Um, we received almost $1.4 million, and I did talk to the Oklahoma, we talked to the um, Oklahoma Tax Commission, and we should be getting about another $30,000 for the tax-free weekend. So that will make us a little bit over $105,000 up this month. Um, that's up a hundred and some thousand dollars from last year okay but so with a cumulative um, for the fiscal year we're still down about one percent but we are making strides and gaining some but overall our revenues are above projected overall revenues any questions why wouldn't uh, no tax day be included with all the rest of it? I think we have to figure out different we get a check every year some some of our retailers report on a monthly basis others are two weeks behind and one's estimated so they have to gather all that information before they can tell me what that amount is i have a question on this rebate for uh, people that don't understand that like myself does that come out of the state is they just send us a check for, for they give us? an estimate of what was spent here in shawnee and they give us our fair share of the sales tax <clears throat> and it does come out of the state oh, okay i didn't realize that i did not realize that so the tax-free weekend, we don't lose anything. It's very good, huh? Well, we still pay for it in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess uh, now that you're on a roll and are bringing good news, do you think you can keep this up? I hope. There's one key, Shop Shawnee. <laughs> That's right. You've got Shop Shawnee. That's a, a great one. Next item, consider bids and proposals. Proposal to replace City Hall phone system. It's been requested that we uh, defer this to the second meeting in January. Mr. Lynch. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Don Lynch, Emergency Management Director. Uh, internal staff working group consisting of uh, our staff in the Emergency Management Department, the Chief Information Officer, reviewed the seven proposals that were submitted uh, concerning this system. We have uh, narrowed those down to the four proposals uh, from the lease cost forward. Uh, the other proposals that, that have been separated uh, had no features or anything that, that is not already covered in the four lowest cost uh, proposals that we received. Uh, we're asking to defer this to January to allow us to continue to uh, study those proposals, to allow us to do the checks with the references that are given. Uh, there are a couple of the, the types of systems uh, that we haven't seen before as we were doing our preliminary research. We'd like to look at those phone systems uh, that are actually in use, talk to the people that are using them and see how they work. And then also because there's some diversity in uh, the information that is proposed, we'd like to talk to at least a couple of the vendors, if not all four of the vendors, again, uh, to make sure that they have captured everything in their proposal because there seems to be some question, uh, at least in staff's mind, are they covering everything that they need to cover? This is a pretty important endeavor, something that we're going to be spending a lot of money on using a lot uh, for hopefully a long time in the city. We want to make sure that we take the time and do it right as we're going forward with that. So that's our, our reason for requesting uh, the continued deferral of this item. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I don't even know. I guess okay. Then we uh, need to. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to defer. To motion. Second. Okay. Motion to Commissioner defer. Smith and Mr. Winteringer, a second. Call the roll, please. Smith. Aye. Aye. Stevens. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will uh, recess our city commission and uh, go to the Shawnee Municipal Authority agenda. And I'll call to order the Shawnee Municipal Authority of October the 15th, 2012. Uh, call a roll, please. I don't have to after that, huh? Says Delecroy, okay, sorry about that. 
Um, first items, consider approval of consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Call a roll, please. I'm sorry, Steve. Smith. Aye. Harris. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Paul. Aye. 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 I'm sorry, I skipped. Consider the bids. THM. Uh, this, we opened bids for THM analyzer and got one bid, and we've looked it over. Staff recommends awarding the bid for the THM analyzer to Parker. And of Pan Corporation, an amount of $35,760. What had we budgeted for that? Hmm? What had we budgeted for that? I think it was 38. 38. Okay. Thank you. This is your area. Hall. Commissioner Hall. <laughs> Any questions on this? Hubby? They going to provide training. It's pretty simple to use, isn't it? Each one. Excuse me. Are they going to provide training on how to use it? And yes. Huh? Like four hours. It's pretty simple. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's plus it has online. You can get online yeah. and look at it. Uh, Move to approve. Well, we have a motion to approve this second. bid. How about a second? I'll second. Mr. Hall, call the roll, please. Yeah. Aye. Hall. Aye. Aye. Stevens? Aye. 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 Next item is replacement of the screw pumps award. Staff recommends awarding the screw pump replacement project at the north side plant to wind construction in the amount of $203,000. $250,000 was budgeted. What was that comment? What was that last part? Two hundred fifty thousand was budgeted. And, excuse me, I didn't hear who, who you. Two hundred fifty thousand no, was budgeted. Who is it? What company is it? Win. Lynn. Win. 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 We've worked with them before yeah, out there, and they've done a good they job. Did. Questions? They did the last one or the one before? Right? They did the one before. Yeah. I'd move we replace the screw pump to award the contract to Win Construction. Second. <clears throat> I have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, call a roll, please. Harris. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Agee. Aye. Mayor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> motion carries. Next item, any new business to Shawnee Municipal Authority? If not, I'll move to the next one, administrative reports. Mr. Chairman, no new business or administrative reports tonight. Okay, sir. Uh, then we'll uh, consider a motion to adjourn the Shawnee Municipal Authority. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Aye. Smith. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Agee. Aye. Heron. Mayor. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We will now proceed to the Shawnee Airport Authority. Uh, consider approval of the consent agenda. Agenda, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Move. Chairman, I want to make a point here. Uh, Rex, this question is for Rex or, or Cindy, and I should know the answer to this question, but our current <coughs> tenant was, was a little behind in the rent. Are they caught up? They yes. caught up. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, the second. I did. Mr. Winteringer. We have a motion and a second on the consent agenda. Call the roll, please. Smith. Aye. Winner. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Ag. Aye. Terry. Aye. Mayor. Aye. Paul. Aye. Motion carries. Any new business or administrative reports? Mr. Chairman, no new business or administrative reports tonight. Okay. Then uh, I'll call for adjournment of uh, the Shawnee Airport Authority. I'll have a second. 
Motion and a second. Call a roll, please. Harris. Aye. Aye. Smith. Aye. 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 We will now return to the City Commission agenda. Any new business? Mr. Chairman, no new business this evening. No new business. Any administrative reports? Yes, sir. One, I'm very proud to say. Chief Short's going to come up and talk to us about a recent occurrence with our ISO rating. Great. You may recall just uh, last month, I believe it was in Oklahoma City, there was a lot of excitement about the uh, ISO rating that Oklahoma City had attained. Um, I just want to share with you that we're pretty excited in Shawnee because we also have improved our ISO rating. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with ISO, I'll explain that in just a, a couple of minutes. I'm sure Mr. Smith probably has uh, some, some idea of what it is about, but I would like to share with, uh, a few things about that and following Mr. Maynard's lead, I'm going to do a little reading here versus trying to quote this stuff if y'all don't mind. Um, in 2011, per request for Fire Chief uh, Gibson, the Insurance Services Organization, or ISO, performed an inspection of the services uh, and the capabilities of the fire department to extinguish structure fires. <coughs> they collect and, and uh, evaluate information from communities across the United States. ISO then uh, delivers this information into uh, an analyzation process and classifies the fire protection systems for the community uh, through a fire suppression rating system. Basically what that is, it's a report card for your fire department and we're very happy with ours at this current time and I'll, uh, again, we'll get to that just a little bit later. Statistical data on insurance losses bear out relationship between excellent fire protection and fire losses. This data assists insurance companies in the information for marketing, underwriting, and to help establish fair premiums for homeowners. Uh, the rating system is done on a scale of one to 10, with one being the best, 10 being the least uh, effective. Information gathered by ISO is derived from three primary sources within our community. The first and the one that carries the most weight is the fire department. The second is our water department. The third is our dispatch system that we have in our city. Um, each one of those play a very significant contributing role. The performance and capabilities of these departments help determine or have a huge effect on our local insurance rates for the citizens of the community. A community investment in fire mitigation is a proven and reliable predictor of future fire losses. Basically, I say all of this. This is the part that we're very, very proud of. Of the 1,549 communities within the state of Oklahoma that are examined, there are only six that rate higher than we do. Time out. Would you repeat that again I very slowly, very, please? That's very, very impressive. Proud to do that. Of 1,549 communities across the state of Oklahoma that are evaluated by ISO, <clears throat> there are only six that are better than we are. And uh, that's certainly something that we take pride in. It's fantastic. It's, it's that puts incredible. us at a three slash nine rating for the city of Shawnee. Um, we would love to be a two or a one. We will continue to work to get toward that, but there are many, many stipulations that, uh, that are holding us back at this time, and, and we would love to discuss those at a later point in time. 3.9, three, .9, three uh, rating goes for the city proper of Shawnee. Uh, the nine goes uh, for the lake area. There are a number of significant factors why the, the nine is, is for that area out there. And, and again, we would love to share those, uh, those ideas and some ideas to correct those. We would love to share those with you at another time when we have a little bit more time and uh, have gone into some more detail. The fire department, the water department, and the dispatch system are currently and uh, constantly working to improve the services that we provide. At times, you may see someone from the fire department or the water department doing some very unusual things, and you might wonder what the purpose for those are. They may be testing hydrants, water flowing into the street, and people look at that and go, what a ridiculous thing to do. We're at a water shortage. 
maybe the, the guys from the fire department out uh, doing various things with their equipment, trying to become more familiar with their equipment. All of those things go toward uh, gaining our status with ISO. Painted, uh, the, each one of our hydrants are painted for a specific purpose and a, and a distinct color. A lot of times we have people that will go out and, and paint our hydrants just so they'll match their landscaping, their house color, whatever. We would ask that people do not do that. That is a specific purpose for those being that color. Please don't plant shrubs or flowers around their water hydrants because uh, even though it may look more aesthetic, it doesn't really help us find those at times. And, and there may be a situation where that it's uh, needed at your house to put out fire. So please do not do those kind of things and encourage others not to do those. Along with many other activities that are done in an effort, uh, not only for the effect that we would like to keep our citizens safe, and that's our primary goal, but it's also pretty nice to be able to save them a little money along the way. And we realize in the fire department that it's, it's, we are in an expensive business. It, it costs a lot to, to keep the fire department and, and our service available. And we understand that. We want to provide the very best quality service that we can. With great pride, again, I say that we are now a 3-9, coming down from a 4-9 uh, as to what we've been for the last several years, and that should reflect on our insurance rates um, in future dates. It, it um, is something you should probably check with your insurance person about. They may be able to save you a little money. I, I just got to make some comments about this, folks. I've had the opportunity to spend some time with him and look at this report. And I mean, there's, it's unbelievable the measuring sticks they have uh, for all the things, like how much water will flow through a meter. I could just go on and on. It's a very, very detailed report. But I wish there was some way the citizens of all the citizens Shawnee could realize what this means to our community and what you've done, because you kind of subtly said it affects our insurance rates. But it does. It affects all of our insurance rates and what we pay. And I'm personally going to be calling uh, my insurance agent and saying I need my rate to go down because of this new rating. And I, but again, what a great job. And I, I, we need to tell the world about in Shawnee and in the city limits uh, how wonderful this is and what you've done and your team have done to get that down. And I know to get to the next level is a very expensive probably and some other things, but I'm telling you what, that's a great stride that you've done to make this this movement. And thank you to you and your staff. Thank you. Uh, before you walk away, <laughs> let me straighten out a few things here. Uh, <coughs> it's not just the lake property. If you live more than 1,000 feet away from a fire hydrant and you're in the city of Shawnee, you could be classified as a not. That is correct. And it, and it normally, uh, normally has to do with uh, also being within five miles of a, of right. a fire station. And so that pretty much takes care of everybody else in the city. It may not be a three, but it won't be a nine. Right. And I just want the citizens to know that it's not an automatic thing. And there are companies out there that do not uh, go by ISO ratings at all. That is Most correct. of them do, but not all of them do. Some of them have their own ratings based on their own experience. You so. stole my limelight. I was getting ready to say this, but since you said it, that's fine. Well, anyway. uh, that, that is true. There are a number of them that do not go by this standard but most do. That's why I, was, I don't uh, know who Wes has his insurance with. It's not, but it's automatic if they do, and most of them do. It's a very competitive no field. But the main thing I'd like to call to attention, and this is what I'm excited about, you're going to, everybody's, most people, I should say, most people will experience a rate decrease as long as there's not any increases in losses in the state. Right. And then the second thing is, this is great for our industry. Yeah. It, it will bring more jobs and more businesses to Shawnee because of that, because it saves the industries thousands and thousands of dollars. And that's what I'd like to point out. This is, that's what's really good for it. It's great. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Other comments? Uh, to, I mean, this is a big deal. I, I kind of <laughs> I want everybody to realize this is a very big deal that is, has happened here in Shawnee, and it's exciting for us. And I just have one quick question. Yes, <clears throat> the ISO rating of 3 or 9, is, does it matter whether the nearest fire station is volunteer versus uh, paid? 
actually uh, that is a benefit, but uh, it's not just a drastic benefit. By any means, it does help. Um, uh, it has a lot to do with what, how often they have someone there. Just uh, purely on a volunteer status, mm -hmm. uh, ISO actually rates the length of time it takes someone to get to that location, who they will be, and what what equipment that they have to use. Any other questions? No, thank you for such a great report. Uh, I would I would also like to add you you were very very kind and, and I appreciate the fact that uh, you included the or you you made special mention of the fire department and the work we did. But I would like to give give uh, some recognition to the water department. They've helped us. That's true. Uh, Forty percent of this comes from from what they do, and uh, they've really they they're a big benefit to us. Without them, would be lost. Uh, we would probably all be a 9 or a 10 rating. Um, at the same time, the police department helps us through their dispatch system. Uh, that is involved in this as well. So um, I want to give credit where credit is due. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Anything else under administrative? Mr. Chairman, there are no other administrative reports. Well, it, uh, I'll, let's consider an executive uh, Session to discuss potential claims, litigation, or other options regarding encroachment into the city's utility service area by other entities as authorized by 25 OS 307B4. I'll ask for a motion on that. Were we going to do commissioner's comments? No, we're going to do that later. That, do that after, I thought we'd just okay. do that later. Okay. So I'll move. Have a motion? Second. A second. Okay. We will recess our commission meeting and move into executive session at this time. I want to vote, Wes. Oh, we do? All right, then vote. vote. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm ready to get on the vote. Okay. Or whatever. Let's do some days. Long tank. Okay, call the roll. <laughs> John wants to vote. Days or days. Aye. 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 I guess it's I as I been ringing all the while. I've been there. I need help. <laughs> the city commission back to order and uh, state that no action was taken in executive session and uh, item number eight consideration and possible action on matters discussed in executive session regarding potential claims litigation or other options regarding encroachment into the city's service area by other entities is authorized Uh, I'll ask for a motion on this. No vote. Hearing. There's no action taken. No, no action. I'm saying so we don't have to ask for a vote right. because there'll be no, if no one votes on it, then it won't pass. Okay. Right. It passes out with no action. Okay. No action. Okay. Now it's time for commissioner's comments. And it's a great time to talk among ourselves here <laughs> yeah. since we don't have a lot of people <laughs> out there. So 
I had Let's a comment talk. that uh, that I wanted to make, and I guess I'll just make it for the record since there's nobody here really except okay. us to talk to. We are being recorded. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for reminding me about that. Okay. Uh, since it is Family Promise Week, and I saw that in my agenda packet, I went out and took a look at the website for Family Promise. And if you haven't done that, I would recommend doing that, especially this week. Uh, I know people that provide these types of services don't always want to uh, to toot their own horn, but uh, this is one light that I, I think should not be hit under a bushel. These people uh, do a lot of good. I was very impressed by what I read on that website. Uh, they help uh, on the average of about 17 families a year, and in addition to helping those families directly, they have like 285 to 300 families that they help uh, through referrals and assistance. And this is really a hand up, not a handout, that these people provide. Uh, they do all this with volunteers from Family pr uh, Promise and working with the churches throughout the community. So if you haven't gone out to that website, I don't have the website name, but if you'll just go out to Google and type in uh, Family Promise of Shawnee, their website will pop up. And I recommend that you go out there and read that. I happened to visit their main facility on the United Way tour. Very impressive what they, uh, they do. Linda, I agree. It, uh, I've not looked at their website, but I've personally been involved with it, and it's, it's a very good thought. Commissioner Stevens, talk to us, huh? Nope. Nothing, nothing to talk, huh? Okay, Linda, anything else? Commissioner here? 911. We've been talking about it. Um, it's we're so close to the election here at the county commissioner. I think we ought to just let it go continue to have while. talks with okay. those those new elected officials when they get in. I will make a comment. I have met with Melissa about that, and she's very optimistic. I was a little bit concerned when I read in the paper the pay form comments that they maybe didn't see a solution the 911 being resolved. I don't know if you read that. Uh, it was in the paper about that. And i kind of very disturbed because I'm, I'm kind of optimistic. I tell you, I, uh, I've met with a key person over in Tecumseh. And uh, there's, there's some people out there wanting to get this 911 thing resolved and uh, move forward with it. And uh, I tell you, the leadership of that Melissa Dennis, I think, can really take us a long ways to making this happen. She's a very good dynamic leader in that area. Other questions, Mr. Harry? Pool committee. James is He's gone. I can tell you I was at the first meeting. They have met. They're having their second meeting tomorrow uh, is tomorrow Wednesday. no you no know, Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening. John's on it. He's keeping them straight. He is uh, yeah. good deal guys. They're meeting and John will be our key person to give us the updates as as we come along and that's a great question and I think they're they're mainly focused on the RF. And it's an RFP, if I have that right. RFP. What is that? RFQ. RFQ. So they've yeah. got to select an architect and all that, and get presentations by those before they move on really to anything else. Is the way I understand. And we have a chairman of the committee, John mm -hmm. Ayers. Is uh -huh. that right? What's right. His mm -hmm. name? And he's. So I think they're. He's, he's the one's going to keep us under control. He's not a John worker. He's a worker. <laughs> What's his name? John Ayers. Uh, oh, okay. He was very involved in the uh, Tulsa area and has lived here now for some time, lives out the country club and his marketing background and uh, really that. Commissioner Hall. I'm good. Good to be home. Commissioner Winteringer, talk to us. Uh, the new doors look really nice, uh, kind of inviting in. They look very good if you ask me. Uh, John, you were just giving me a hard time about spending well, money on them before the meeting. Well, you budgeted them or whatever, so you said, <laughs> I, I'm agreeing with you some. Nice. And inviting, so people can see in without opening the door. We don't give you a hard time without, you know. It's what like, else, John? Uh, Talk to us. Uh, You've got a list there. I, I have a see. list. I want to know how, if anybody's using the uh, homeland to pay their um, water bills. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, talk to us. Save this for our for our special call meeting because it was one of the things I was going to talk about. But I was pleased to note that every month we just have more and more people using it. Um, what I found kind of surprising um, last month we had 25 people using it and they brought in about three thousand dollars. Just over the past weekend we had 28 people 
that used it just in the last two days. Mm, wow. And I talked to the girls in the water department and said, is there something going on or we have a big cutoff? And like, no, just normal weekend. So I think um, more and more people are using it. Um, it started out, you know, slow and, and we started July 1st, but by you know, every month we've just gained more and more people. About how many months goes? I think, uh, not counting, you know, this, the current month that we're in, I think we could probably average around 30 people a month, regular people that use it, and probably right around $3,000 a month is brought in. Well, when are we going to announce to the public the new drive-by? My mother's, we're not going to? Oh, no, or? I mean, any time. Yeah. I mean, how do we do that? Because I don't, Nat used to, like, my mother and the elderly people down at the uh, right, retirement center down here, community center, they all complained about they had to get out of their car, step up on the curb and go over there, and now they have it fixed where you don't even have to get out of your car. You just drive by where it used to be open and talk to someone. Now then they have a slot. You can just reach out your car window and drop it in there. So I just think, I, I don't think many people in Shawnee know well, that what we could do is we could um, note it on our water bills. We have a spot on our water bills. That that's a great have. thought. I think that uh, about three lines worth, so we could probably fit that in. in you know, a lot of these elderly people will drive 10 to 12 miles to save 44 cents. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm one of those problems. I'm an elderly person. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, John, what's else on your list? What percentage do they get? I'm, I'm just trying to remember how it works, how they, how, how they get paid. Right. Right. Yeah. Not. Well, <laughs> it's, Homeland doesn't get anything. Um, uh, the company that has The company, it depends on your method of payment. If you're paying by check or cash, there's a dollar um, convenience fee. If you pay by credit card, it's a little more expensive, $3.50. We don't get any of that. That's all the credit card company. So it depends on your method of payment. And it's, it's a convenience fee and, you know, credit cards. That's something that we have talked about about if, how to address those convenience fees. Also in our um, online payments with credit cards, there's a fee. So I think we're looking at that, maybe to do something about that in the future to see the cost of <coughs> things like that. We have direct withdrawal. Is that any kind of? No fee. No fee. You know, just a comment. I, if you've heard, I've got a, a little office here downstairs and I'm now going up and going by the water department a lot and, and I'm amazed at what the young ladies that sit there and take the money, how good a job they do. I just stood back, I've stood back just three or four times and watched them handle some, some of those customers are pretty difficult and I want to commend you and your department for the way that they're handling that. And, uh, that's a tough, they're on the firing line and people don't have the money to pay their water bill or they think they've been overcharged. I mean. And, uh, they take a lot of abuse. They take a lot of abuse. They and, do a pretty good job with it. Most good job. I've got, I've got one more quick comment. Um, Jim Winteringer, my father, um, thinks tearing down the building looks great. He's really He really likes that when we drive by there. Good. He's excited okay. for the new parking that's going to go good. next door. So. Okay. He's excited. Mm -hmm. We'll throw that in there. Great. Thank you. He Commissioner probably, Smith? He, he probably wants to put another Sony crime in. <laughs> <laughs> probably so. <laughs> I really, I did a lot of my comments already. That's good. I really don't have anything. I, again, I truly appreciate your input, people, and I think it's great. We have to, we have to share these thoughts uh, together here, and to make this uh, a better place for all. And uh, thank you very much for it. Um, if there are any, any more commissioner comments, if not, then I'll consider uh, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Second. Smith, Mr. Winteringer, call the roll, please. Smith. Aye. 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 In case you do not know, Drew Finley passed away uh, the day before yesterday. He was kind of, you know, Finley and Cook, the founder of it here in, uh, uh, in our community. And then, hi again. We need to breathe the prayers for Mary Ann. Mary Ann's a very sick lady. and. Uh, we need to be sure that uh, we think about her and do something about it. Amen. Thank all of you guys and ladies. Thank you.